The whole place is filled with strange excitement. I can feel my heart pumping blood through my veins and whispers coming out of the dark. My skin starts to crawl and sweat slowly drips down my back. I close my eyes for a moment. The light is blinding and I cannot see, but some irresistible force moves my feet onto the stage. I forget my fears and give in. I love acting. I used to not to. Too much pressure. Too many people waiting for a mistake, judging me mercilessly. It has been a journey that has affected many things about me. My social life, my attitude, my confidence, and most importantly, my ability to speak. Today, I will share something with you that I have not told many. When I was, I will tell you a personal story, a story about how I was not able to speak. I mean, I was able to produce sounds, but it was just that nobody else could really understand me. I was not able to communicate. As a kid, I used to stutter and mumble and speak so fast that no, 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 no matter how hard I tried I, 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 to, to, to talk to people, no, nobody could really understand me. Could not change it, nor control it. As you can imagine, I had a lot of problems in school. Speaking in front of a class was like my worst nightmare. I would get so anxious that I would start to sweat and mumble and stutter, and normally I had to just give up and let other kids read my essay. Speaking with strangers was even worse. I would literally get a minor panic attack. I remember I used to think of all the possible people and conversations that I might encounter beforehand and try to come up with possible answers and things to say. But once in the situation, I would again block and get confused. And it did not matter that I was in the library, hospital, or just a grocery store. I mean, I couldn't even answer the phone. It was bad, and there was nothing I could really do about it. Multiple attempts of my family to fix the problem also did not really help. My aunt was especially persistent. I can still hear her words. Slower, speak slower, please. Nope. Can't understand you. Nothing worked. As a result, I was slowly sinking into myself. I was too scared of the outside world, and I much more preferred my own world of books, dinosaurs, transformers, and cartoon network. Unfortunately, I mostly kept to myself and tried to stay away from other people. Then, when I was about seven or eight, my mom took me to theater to see a play. It was a kid's play, and there were pirates and swords and a real ship on the stage, and I was fascinated. I wanted to be there and play with them. And soon afterwards, I joined the theater. Now, you have to remember that this was the time before video games were so popular. So if a kid wanted to escape and live in a parallel reality, there were not that many options. At the time, however, I didn't quite realize what I was getting myself into. All I wanted was to be a pirate and play on the stage. Then I went on my first rehearsal, and then came the shock. I didn't realize that in order to get to the stage and play, I had to first practice and read my lines in front of the, my peers and the director. I was so nervous that I would stutter and mumble and sweat every single rehearsal. 
I remember they were doing Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and I was selected to play the prince. Most likely because every single kid was included in the project and there was more than one cast. Then came the opening night, and I was supposed to perform in the theater for the first time in my life. I told myself, Nicola, you got this. I put on my costume and gathered all my strength and courage. And as I walked onto the stage, something changed. Something was different. I felt a sudden wave of adrenaline and thrill. And that night, I ran away. I ran away as fast as I could, promising myself never to return to that horrible place ever again. I did not perform that night, nor any other night, as the prince in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. But I did return two years later. The memory of my failure never really left me, and I could not accept it. As a more mature kid, I decided to give it another try, and I've been acting ever since. It wasn't easy, and I struggled a lot, mostly to overcome my own fears. It took a lot of hard work, patience, and practice. I would sit in my room, pencil in my mouth, like this, trying to articulate it better and read my life. At age 11, I was learning how to talk and breathe at the same time, realizing that not everything needs to be said in one breath. Eventually, my speaking problems started to go away. I began to articulate better and speak slower. And this is my slower. As I became more comfortable on stage, I learned how to leave that scared and anxious kid behind the scene and enter confidently as an old man in Tsar Trojan, lead a group of misfits in Hilprick the Great Bandit, or play Torvald in Doll's House or Mortimer in Arsenic and Old Lace. Theater became my real passion. Because for the first time in my life, I was able to be somebody other than that scared and anxious kid. I went from playing minor parts to leading roles. And I wasn't always successful in my roles. But I kept practicing and playing because I love theater. And because I promised myself never to run away from a problem again. Over the years, I became a decent actor. I was never the best, but a good one. However, I knew my limits very well, and I never strived to be a professional actor. But theater did allow me to realize my dreams. Without theater, I would not be where I am here today. I would have not become a successful student of business and politics, nor would I have gotten the jobs or scholarships that I did. When I think about it, I'm not even sure that I would have experienced many other things in life if it wasn't for theater. Because theater did not only cure my speaking problem, but it also taught me important lessons about life, business, and human relationships. If I had to sum up five most important things that theater has taught me, and that you can also apply in your daily life, those would be the following. You cannot succeed in anything unless you're passionate about your goals and ideas. See, in theater, you have to show passion for your character. I remember I used to be very, very shy and timid. And then I slowly learned how to give more, how to relax. And the more I relaxed, the better response I received from the audience. And I know this is not something new. You've probably heard this before. But here's why. 
You cannot succeed without other people. And other people won't believe you unless you show your passion about your goals and ideas. You cannot build any kind of relationship, either personal or professional, if you don't understand people. For example, if you want to portray your character in the best possible way, you have to really learn a lot about him. You have to understand the context. You have to understand where is this people, person coming from. The same thing goes in life. You cannot understand people unless you try to put yourself in their shoes. So realize that empathy and emotional intelligence can be developed. And for the beginning, try to put yourself in other people's shoes when you meet them. Stress is not necessarily a bad thing. People are afraid of stress. They perceive it as something bad, something that should be eliminated. But see, in theater, you cannot come onto the stage and be indifferent, and be cold and, and completely calm. You have to have that stress in you. You have to have that energy. But see, if you perceive stress as something negative, as something bad, you will go there and block. You will forget your lines. But if you perceive stress as something good, that gives you energy, then you can perform in the best possible way. So if you perceive stress as a fuel that gives you energy, as something that enables you to perform better, also, you have to learn how to live in the present. People always get lost in their thoughts, and they get scared and afraid, and then they don't think about the moment. They don't think about the presence. In theater, unless you try to, to be present and stay in the moment, you forget your lines, and then you block. You cannot come out of it. But if you learn how to stay present, you can quickly improvise and come up with something else. And same goes for you. When you encounter any kind of a difficult, stressful situation, something new, you just have to stay present and react quickly. And finally, there is no success without preparation and hard work. When you see people on television or in theater or in the movies, they seem so confident and they, you think they're just talented, that it's all natural. But that's not that always true. Everything comes with good preparation. And even the great improvisation come out of good preparation. Now, I understand that not all of you will have a chance to act in a theater play, although I do urge you to join a local theater group or take a college class. But the next time you go to theater to see a play, watch carefully what is happening on the stage, how actors behave and interact with each other. Think about the things that I mentioned and see what you can learn from that experience. Because essentially, many things that we experience in life are some sort of a stage where we are expected to perform. And there are many roles that we have to play in our lives. And each one of these stages, and each one of these roles, require some passion, courage, mindfulness, empathy, hard work, and a little bit of acting. And you do have power and ability to act out any of those roles successfully if you learn how to deal with fear and anxiety. Now, I'm not recommending here fake it till you make it approach. On the contrary, I'm urging you to be honest and authentic because only then you can be the best version of yourself. But you cannot be yourself if you let stress, anxiety, and fear to take over. Because when you do, you lose yourself, you become somebody else. 
For me, it was theater that did it. But for you, it can be some other activity or hobby that you enjoy. I remember my math professor used to say that I will, be, that I will become a high-ranked rascal. Because despite my talent, I was overly involved in outside of the school activities. And it is true that there is no real substitute for knowledge. But what my professor did not realize was that sometimes the most important lessons and skills we gain from those activities that we do for fun on the side. Especially about fear and doubts, anxiety. The lessons that you cannot find in your textbooks. Today, I had a chance to hear about my personal experience, about the story of how I overcame my problem with speaking and anxiety, and the lesson the theater has taught me about passion, courage, empathy, mindfulness, and hard work. But if you remember only one thing from my speech today. Let it be this. The next time you find yourself in any kind of role, on any kind of stage, please know that you have the ability to leave your stress and anxiety in the backstage. Do not stutter nor mumble, but allow yourself to show the world who you truly are and what you're really capable of.